Good afternoon to all. Today we are discussing about Newton's second law from the laws of motion chapter. This is the second topic. Newton explains the motion of the object by three laws. We are already discussing about that first law. The first law known as laws of inertia or Newton first law. The inertia is depends upon the mass. Which object is having more mass, it is having more inertia. The tendency to resist in the initial position that nature known as inertia. Now, how the object is getting motion? What happens to an object when non-zero net force acts on it? If a non-zero net force acts on an object, what will be happens? Non-zero net force means it is giving some net force. It is not equal to zero. That is known as unbalanced force also. For example, a ball is in the rest position. If you apply the net force is zero, there is no influence force on that uh, ball, so that's why it doesn't change its uh, initial state. If you apply, say, non-zero net force, means unbalanced force, then it will be change its uh, initial state. Place a ball on floor and push it. The ball accelerates from rest. Accelerate means it is increasing the velocity to compare the time period. First of all, it is in the rest position, means initial velocity is zero. While applying the force, it will be getting velocity and that velocity also changed to the two particular time period, so that's why it is accelerates. A non-zero net force or unbalanced force disturbs the state of equilibrium. A non-zero net force or unbalanced force disturbs the state of equilibrium. This is stated by the Newton as Newton's second law. For example, a badminton ball or a cricket ball will hit your hand. What happens? You will be feel a lot of pain. Sometimes the bones will be break. If you fire a gun, the bullet will be damaged more. And if a lorry hits a car, or a bicycle, gun will damage more. The lorry hits the car and also a bicycle. At that situation, we will observe more damage occurs. Why? Here, the ball or the bullet or the lorry having mass and also having some velocity. So these two physical quantities, mass and velocity, are maybe cause to the damage. What will be the another physical property from this. That is known as momentum. Momentum 
is depends on two factors one is mass and another one is velocity this is known as newton's phrase mass in motion mass in motion linear momentum means the product of mass and velocity is called momentum the product of mass and velocity is called momentum this momentum is denoted by the letter p so momentum p is equal to mass into velocity p is equal to m into v m into v so the units of momentum is kg meter per second why because for mass units are kg for velocity meter per second so the units of momentum is equal kg meter per second the linear momentum is described as the product of mass and velocity and denoted with small p here momentum is a, a vector quantity momentum is a vector quantity from our textbook there is an activity if you take a smooth surface means very very less friction or frictionless if you take a ice cube and gently push with some force capital f the ice cube moves with some velocity means it is accelerates the rate of change of velocity known as acceleration so initially the ice cube is in rest position while applying the force it will be moves and change the velocity in a particular time period so the change of rate of velocity means acceleration so that's why the ice cube is accelerates when applies the force if you apply more force it will be accelerates more so acceleration is increased by the applying of the force here we are observing some pictures if the net force is more then the mass is uh, and the velocity mass doesn't change but velocity will be change means accelerate force more acceleration also more force more then acceleration also more now let us we take uh, another activity first of all we recall that momentum once again momentum is a quantity that describes an object resistance due to stopping that uh, momentum depends upon the objective's mass and uh, its uh, velocity so p is equal to mv so momentum is a vector quantity here we giving an example if a mass of the car is 1000 kg and uh, its velocity is 20 meter per second what is the linear momentum of the car here p is equal to mv we know that principles the linear momentum is equal to the product of mass and velocity so p is equal 1000 into 20 so p is equal 20000 kg meter per second that is the momentum of the car another activity if we taking two different masses of ice cubes one is less mass and another one is more mass if you apply the same force on the two ice cubes what will be happens which one is having less mass that is accelerates more and which is having more mass that is accelerates less means the 
applying of the force is when it is constant if the mass is more the acceleration is less here we have done the acceleration of your body increases with the increasing of force if you apply more force it will be accelerate more or if the mass is increasing then the acceleration will be decreasing the acceleration of your body increases with increasing of force this is activity force and if the mass is increasing then decreasing the acceleration and decreases with the increasing of mass when a force applied on your body it gets accelerated the product of mass and velocity is called as momentum the acceleration is increases with the increasing of force and decreases with the increasing of the mass these are all said in that newton's second law the applying of the net force f net is directly proportional to change in momentum by time the rate of change of momentum known as force so f net is directly proportional to change in momentum by time newton's principia explains that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the net force applied on the object in the direction of the net force here direction is also very important the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the net force applied on the object in the direction of the net force so the units of force is newtons capital n and on honor of the great scientist sir isaac newton we gives the unit per force as newtons capital n and cgs units of force is dyne dy dyne so one newton is equal one newton is equal 10 to the power of pi dynes 10 to the power of pi dynes here we observing 1 2 3 4 5 zeros so 10 to the power of pi dynes are 100 thousands are 1 lakh dynes so 1 newton is equal to 10 to the power of pi dynes now we calculate the net force by mathematically here does the net force f net is uh, proportional to change the momentum by time period f net is proportional to delta p change of momentum indicated with delta p so delta p by time also variation here so that's why delta t delta p is the change of momentum of a particle or a system of partic uh, particles brought about by the net force in a time interval delta t when the symbols of proportionality is removed we should be substitute the constant value in that equation so f net is equal to k into delta p by delta t here delta p we can write as mv minus mu also mv minus mu momentum means mass into velocity so your final velocity initial velocity the change of velocity so we can write as p is equal delta p is equal delta mv means m mv minus mu so f net is equal to m into delta v by delta t we know that the rate of change of velocity known as acceleration so acceleration a is equal to delta v by t so instead of delta v by delta t you can write as a so f net is equal to m a f net is equal to m a so the force f is equal to m a so here the units of force is equal to kg meter per second square the unit has named as newton 
that is kg meter per second square. Here we are observing a picture. A cricketer is hit say a ball. In that we can observe that linear momentum. The batsman use that bat. The bat has a wing mass, and he accelerates the bat. Means he changes the velocity of bat while hitting. So the product of mass and acceleration is equivalent to the applying of the force on a ball. So the mass of the bat and the acceleration, these two physical quantities, product is equivalent to the applying of the force. He And also, from our textbook, there is an example problem. That example problem is a mat of mass, one kg, and the length is one meter, is placed on the floor. One end of the mat is pulled with a constant speed of one meter per second towards the other end till the other end comes into motion till the mat is reversed how much force is required to do this here we are using force to move the mat the weight of the or the mass of the mat is 1 kg m is equal to 1 kg it will be travels with the speed is one meter per second. And it will be travels how much distance we will be calculate now. First the mat is, the length of the mat is one meter. And we pull this mat with constant speed of one meter per second. And uh, comes to that end of the other side. It means it travels one meter length of the mat and also move another one meter. Means totally it travels two meters. It will be having the length as one meter and it is pulled with some force and come to that first end to that second end. Means it is travels another one meter. Means totally it is travels one plus one, two meters. How in how much time? We calculate now that with the speed of one meter per second. So the, distance, the time is required to bringing the uh, distance of the two meters. Delta T is equal to distance covered by the end by the speed means two meters by one meter per second. That means it is travels with the time period as one second, two seconds. So we are calculate that another one is that what, how much the force. So for this, we using the Newton's second law, F net is equal delta P by delta T. F net is equal to delta P, you can write as delta MV by delta T. So mass is one meter, so one meter, sorry, mass is one kg. So here that mass is one kg into velocity, one meter per second by the time period is two seconds. So one into one by two means applying of the force on that mass is half Newton. F net is equal half Newton. In this way, we will be giving solution for the given example. Here, to a note is there. The Newton's second law, we can apply 
in the universal but the mass will be constant so it is the universal formula at a constant mass the newton second law can apply in a universe and uh, with a constant mass so it is a universal formula at a constant mass and the weight of the body is taken as mg the weight of the body is taken as mg here g is gravitational value and uh, another problem is there in our textbook that is a 5 kg object travels with 10 meter per second by applying a force the object get 20 me 25 meter per second in 15 seconds find how much of net force applies on object here we write that values first to the mass of the object m is equal 5 kg initial velocity u is equal 10 meter per second and time period t is equal 15 second and finally it get that velocity as 25 meter per second that is v v is equal 25 meter per second how much of the force is applied f is equal to how much here we remember that newton second law f net is equal to ma let us simply f is equal to ma so f is equal to m into instead of a you can write as v minus u by t the rate of change of velocity known as acceleration so that's why acceleration a is equal to v minus u by t we apply that f is equal to m into v minus u by t now we are substituting all that values f is equal to pi into 25 minus 10 by 15 so f is equal to pi into 15 by 15 15 one ja 15 one ja so we will we get that f is equal to pi into 1 means f is equal to pi newtons f is equal to pi newton in this way we will be calculating the problem and uh, now there is a right units for acceleration and force units for acceleration meter per second square we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration so force is equal to ma kg meter per second square or newton give live live examples for linear momentum from our daily life as well as another question calculate the acceleration when apply 10 newtons force on 80 kg object by a man and another question find a momentum if a 0.05 kg mass of the object move with 400 meter per second these three questions we can do in your notebook now for this uh, newton second law we will be uh, observing uh, in video from this video you can easily understood the newton second law we learn that uh, force push and pull in our from our eighth class when a person is applying the force it will be move if you apply the force on a object it will be move applying of the force is change the state of the object the force forward we can know as push or backward you know as pull the newton second law says that the force f is equal to ma so the force of the object will be accelerate the object if you apply the force then the object will be accelerate if the acceleration is zero 
that means there is no change in that uh, state or there is no change in that velocity means acceleration is zero then f is equal to mass into zero means uh, f is equal to zero the acceleration zero means applying of the force is also zero here we are observing some hitting bodies objects a cricketer will be hits the ball with bat that means he applies the linear momentum here how to calculate the force first of all we take a ball that ball is pulled by the gravitational force and also apply the normal force to that oppositely to that gravitational force so that's why the net force is zero so there is no change in that state why because the net force is zero unbalanced balanced force is applying so gravitational force is equivalent to the normal reaction force so that's why net force is zero so there is no change or there is no uh, change of the state if you apply the unbalanced force on this object what will be happens if we apply the unbalanced force means some value of the net force what will be happens it will be getting some change of velocity that is that means it is as a weight here two conditions we will be take one is no air resistance and frictionless surface if you apply the force then the ball will be comes into the motion and as a weight means the rate of change of velocity will getting so the applying of the force is equal and to the mass of the object the product of mass of the object and acceleration so here yeah, the body is in the resistance uh, in the rest means there is no net force that means net force is zero so it doesn't change the its initial state if it is in the rest position same in that rest position only or it is in the uniform motion it is in that state only if you apply the force the applying of the force is indicated with the blue arrow mark it will be uh, it will be change the state of the object and the ball will be moves and uh, getting the acceleration so applying of the net force f is equal to m into a so for this units kg meter per second square for this units are kg meter per second square per force and also the units as newtons capital n so here we can write as the acceleration as rate of change of velocity delta v by t so we can write as f is equal to m into delta v by t m into delta v that the product of mass and velocity known as linear momentum i reversely write this so f is equal to the rate of change of momentum so f is equal to delta p by delta t fx of force 
and types of forces. We know this change in speed means accelerating the object, change in direction also, and change in shape, and uh, change that state, motion to rest or rest to motion. <clears throat> 